sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Are we having fun now, brother? Come on! Go! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That's what you call a trailer right there. Word. <laughs> that was the trailer for Ben Hur in all on uh, theaters August 19th. I'm a child of the 70s. So when I was growing up, my great uncle Silas Murph and Lucy Murph, my great auntie, used to sit me in front of a TV and make me watch everything that they loved. So rather was the Ten Commandments, uh, uh, Miracle on 34th Street, The Grapes of Wrath, you know, all these big epic um, hit milestone movies for Hollywood, I had to know them. So I was this young kid who was infatuated with Charleston Heston because of the role he played in the movie Ben-Hur. And... I used to always ask my friends growing up in Oakland, California, did you watch Ben Hur? <laughs> <laughs> they were watching The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, Shaft, <laughs> Rudy Moore movies, you know. And I was infatuated with Ben Hur, and I heard that they were remaking it. And the first thing I thought is, who is this unlucky character <laughs> that's going to have to play <laughs> Judah Ben Hur? Yeah. And walk in the footsteps of, a, what, 11 Academy War, Awards yeah, yeah, it won yeah. back in 59, Award. 1960. Biggest budget of its time at yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And come in the footsteps of Charleston Heston. Yeah. And then I found out who it was. And I said, let's bring him to the show and pray over him. <laughs> <laughs> He's here with us today, Jack Houston, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Pray. Pray hard, guys. <laughs> Man, congratulations. I mean, I, I, I know you from, um, um, well, most recently, Boardwalk Empire. I'm a big Boardwalk Empire fan. Oh, awesome. Um, and I, I know you did some work in Twilight, too. Um, oh, yeah, that was, that was right <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, but that was epic in itself, too, right? Sure, 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 sure. You had no it's idea. part of a big one, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. I was, like, of all of the Twilight, I, I don't really know how it happened, but I was... I think a rapist, yeah. which is like the strangest <laughs> thing to talk about a Twilight movie. Yeah, but yeah. um, yeah. So I was, I, as always, they sort of gave me a really sort of nutty, crazy character to play. Yeah. So yeah, same uh, with Boardwalk kind of Empire, though. Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, How'd you man. learn that role? That was, um, I actually sent in a tape of myself um, from London, and I actually had like long hair and things like that, and I. I had my hair up and I put stuff in my mouth and I came up with this voice and I filmed myself because no one thought I'd, I, they actually sent it to me for another role and I was like, I want to do that guy. Yeah. And I'm like, well, don't be stupid. You're never going to get that guy. So I made my own tape and sent it to them in New York and they, uh, they, they, they gave it to me the next day. The wow. next day. Yeah, and they said it's the only time they've ever cast someone from a tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a night, but I, I literally what I did on the tape is what I did on the day. So they were like, "Yeah, that was um, that was one of those characters that sort of weirdly sort of comes to you in your head and mind, and it starts sort of forming." And then I it, like I was like, "No one else can do this. I have to do it." Yeah, but you also feel sorry for him too for some reason. I think the mask or something. He he dealt oh, with yeah, a lot. He was heart, complicated, man. man. That's but I loved him. Like yeah. I'm saying, Richard, he was a. It's people say like he was a sociopath or something like that, and I said no, that was um, he was <laughs> dealt a shitty hand, man. Yeah. And it's like, but he was beautiful in every way, man. He broke my heart. He broke and, and like when you're working on something for that long, four years, you know, yeah, you be, you you get to know a character a little more than you should, and mm-hmm. you know anything else because mm-hmm. they sort of become a bit bit of a part of you in a way, and um, yeah, that was um. That was a special, special thing to be a part yeah. of that show. When a character dies, does something die in you? By <laughs> <laughs> the way, it's it's funny. It's like they are because you you actually have moments of you you miss them because uh-huh. you're not getting the mask sort of sits pride of place in my office, like yeah. uh, sort of behind me, um, and uh, you know, it, luckily we made some amazing, amazing friends and um, the yeah. people working on that show, and you know, it gave me that 
sort of leg up and where I sort of sort of stand alone in my career and it was um you know it was invaluable so it was like the great experience I ever had yeah how'd you grow up man I'm I'm curious listening to you seem really hip to me like you know like, <laughs> got some edge to you Jack right. Houston <laughs> was be, uh, you know how'd you grow up man? I well, um I grew up in um in London in yeah. England and uh my dad's actually American okay um, uh-huh. so uh I uh, spent my early years in in london but um moved over here when i was 20 years old okay yeah man. yeah damn damn we found out absolutely nothing <laughs> 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 pretty good man <laughs> what's up with that inflation over there in the uh, uk right now man oh <laughs> man yeah <laughs> guys on your own now huh? yeah dude like i mean trust me not something i'm very proud of i have to be honest i think all of us are sitting back with eyes closed saying no <laughs> wow. it's crazy man it's crazy how, how does that Affect travel now that you know UK is now becoming independent of you know, the <laughs> union, and now does that does it affect it now with passports? Well, you know what I th- I I think um, it will just affect the way other people look at us. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like we're just gonna be like, oh, it's you're English. Like you know, they'll rather yeah. like it's like it, it's such a personally. I just found it so sad because it's um the people it's going to affect the most are the young people uh-huh. you know and the mm. people who all the people who voted on it were the people who it won't really affect and the people who it is going to affect are the people you know uh-huh. who uh you know the young who are growing up and it's some um, you know it's a tough time it's tough a tough time. time man tough time man in the world yeah <laughs> man and you live here now right I do, I do. Okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm sort of New York, Los Angeles based. Okay. So. That's what's up, man. Yeah, Jack Houston man. is here. We're gonna get to Ben Hur, man. I just gotta I get know, to know the dude. I, me too. I just wanna step in these know shoes. a little bit too. Jack Troy Garrity was here, and you know Jane Fonda's his mom. He I sat, know Troy. All right, he sat right in the seat that you're sitting in, and I was curious because listening to him, listening to you a little bit, is some similarities. Your aunt, of course, the famous, you know, Angelica Houston. Is it for kids that grow up with parents or relatives that's so big in the industry? Do you feel pressure to be in the industry? Is it harder? Did you just want to say, fuck it, I'm going to go be a skydiver? <laughs> like, how does it happen? <laughs> you know, you it's, it's, fuck it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, I've said that a lot of times, man. Like, uh, it happens on a daily basis. But, um, you know, with, with my uh, you know, my family, you know, the, the, the name Houston's a lot more prominent in America than it is in England. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. so okay. you know, in England, um, you know, it was weird. I was like, from a very young age, I found myself on stage doing something and then I... Uh, um, felt some kind of weird affinity to it, and um, you know, and and not just the acting, like the whole sort of process of film. Like I'm, I'm a like a, as you were saying, something, like I, I love movies. Okay, like, good. From okay. the moment I was like born, like the like my mother, my father said I just locked onto. It. I just uh-huh. wanted to be a part of it, and I watched all those movies. So uh-huh. the same as you. So I, I mean, it was such a funny, weird sort of. Uh, it felt like there was no pressure. It was something that came so naturally. And um, it's sort of a beautiful thing because I feel such pride and, um, you know, about my family because it goes all the way back to my great grandfather yeah, and wow. stuff. So it's like, yeah. you know, it, it, in a weird way, it's like that sort of family business. But I, I look at it now with such wonderful pride. And uh, I think it's such a beautiful thing. And I feel such uh, uh, not pressure, but I feel feel it's such an honor to be a part of this business that they've sort of come to in a way shape mm-hmm. um over their career and you know in, in the little part that i can do that's sort of you know i i i i'm just happy i'm doing something i love as well so Good for you. yeah you yeah. about to be the most famous it's after this being her movie yeah. mm. i think you about to Steal your auntie's thunder. Damn. <laughs> I never do that. Man. She kicked my ass. Okay. <laughs> Whip me back in the shape. Yes, yeah, what's up, man? Jack Houston is here. We're going to talk about Ben Hur up next. Uh, you want to talk with him directly? It's 888 742 3345. Call Basketball us. Season has returned. Has returned. You can hate me now. Jack Houston is here. Sway in the morning, Shade Four Five, star of Ben Hur. Jack, you ever been hated on, man, in the in the business, man? Ah, uh, you know what, man? I, I think like um something like this, man, is mm-hmm. the thing where people, you know, when you're talking about Ben Hur and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. it's so beloved, and by me, like you said, by yeah. you, and by so many other mm-hmm. people, and um, you know, luckily, I loved it. Mm-hmm. 
And I love, you know, there was a version back in 1925, which Raymond Navarro did, a silent movie. Silent movie, movie yeah, right? Man, yeah, Which is yeah, crazy. Yeah, and they did yeah. another version in 1909. And I'm yeah. saying the great thing is this movie came from a book uh, in around 1880 by this guy called General Lou Wallace. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying 130 years later, they're still reimagining that story. So I was wow. saying as an art form, that's like the coolest thing possible because... What the 59 version had and it was so important is um, also today, you know, it's a it's a it's a hard sell. Yeah, I'm saying uh -huh. the 59 version. But what we're able to do is with when I got sent this script, it was written by John Ridley, by the okay. way, who okay. also won mm -hmm. a, an Oscar the year before but for 12 Years a Slave, which is like one of the great movies and one of the great writers. Mm -hmm. And if there wasn't a good script, no one would have wanted to yeah. make this movie. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And luckily, I read the script, and this was someone who came from like loving the Fifty Nine version okay. and Charlton Heston and everything. And then I read the script, and I was like, "Oh wow, this is good. This is really good." Uh -huh. And it's not in any way stepping on the Fifty Nine version. Okay. It's its own entity. It's its own thing. And I thought that was really beautiful. And the character, you know, as an actor, you're looking for characters. I like playing characters, like really out there characters yeah. and you know you're gonna be hard pressed to find a better character than judah ben-hur now is judah ben-hur an actual person was judah or was it a fix a f it was a fictional, fictional character. character okay yeah because it was the, the book was called ben-hur tell of the christ actually and uh -huh. it was general lou wallace came back from war and was having a moment with his faith and his life he was at a uh -huh. crossroads i don't know if something bad happened but he was um he and he came back and wrote this book so you know i was like um i was like you know and and in this version you know people are trying to push it as like just a faith movie and stuff and i'm saying yeah man jesus is in the movie but f for the film it's in today's world you know like like the 59 version it was very much driven by vengeance mm -hmm. it was a revenge story mm -hmm. there was a lot of anger a lot of hatred let's and tell a little bit of the story okay 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 judah ben her yeah was accused i don't know if this is of um uh, was it murder or or, or, or what was he accused? he was trying like, like part of a, like an assassination a, plot a plot yeah by his half brother by his adoptive brother his adopted yeah. brother okay who, who was a roman and mm -hmm. and and judah's a jewish prince yeah and uh and you know, they're as close as it's a love story between two brothers as well. You know, this yeah. thing. Um, and because of that moment, which is a, a complete mistake, he, he Judah is actually uh, his brother betrays him and actually sends Judah to uh, the galley of a slave ship and his family to be crucified. And it's basically Judah's uh, journey back uh, to basically seek revenge on his brother, the brother who ruined his life. But through revenge and all of this hatred, uh, Judah somehow, f which I won't give too much away, okay, because we'll it, like, it. yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's a beautiful, there's a, it's a very different movie to the Fifty Nine in that, <laughs> the way it ends. Oh, really? Do they do the big chariot race? Or? Oh boy, man! Did we do a big chariot race? <laughs> yeah. yeah but, so you actually rode horses before, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up riding horses. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I sort of, I could pretty much ride before I could walk, but um. So I was sort of like walking there all cocky thinking, ah, yeah, it's all right, I can ride a horse. And then you sort of try a chariot for the first time. You realize that doesn't matter at all. It's, uh, <laughs> it's insane. Really? It's, yeah, it's like Formula One or NASCAR in those days. I, four horses uh, on that chariot. It took about three months, three and a half months of training just to get up to four horses on a standing chariot. I can't even imagine it, man. Yeah. I, don't, man I don't even like riding one horse. Especially when they, <laughs> they go down, they try to roll in the mud on you if, you're not, if you don't have to, you know. No, they're, they're, by the, they're insane. They're big things. Yeah, wow. man. Oof. Huge. And four of them. You realize why cars, the power of a car is still referred to as horsepower because that, the power, four horses, when I had my reins and I'm going around that track, and me and Toby, every time you see us with the horses in this movie, that's uh -huh. us with the horses. There's mm. no CGI in the race. That's us wow. doing it. Like, every piece. Because the 59 version, I mean, that was one of the most incredible yeah, moments in here. cinema history. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're yeah. watching it. So we knew we had 
an uphill battle. So, the, like for us, you say Ben Hur, you think chariots. You know yeah. what I mean? So the chariot race was very important to everybody. Nobody got hurt. Some people got hurt. No okay. one died. Oh. Okay, 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 <laughs> That's okay, the way okay. I yeah, said, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been trained on that answer. Yeah, I can man. Tell. Yeah. I was, yeah. The studio told him how to answer that. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. No, no, no. But when I say hurt, people, people, no one made it. No one got any serious injuries, and no horses were hurt. Okay, that was the way. next question. Not one. And by the right. that was but the horses were were cared for better than any of the actors because we were all like we <laughs> were like that Peter. that is not happening yeah, yeah. because you know the last version that a lot of horses were died. in killed yeah you yeah. know that was it was a rough and you know when they get injured you gotta kill them well back yeah. then they didn't have That's sanctions it. on animals uh absolutely they could die and then nobody gave a shit it wasn't until i think maybe around the 70s or 80s exactly until, yeah, when that started yeah and that was it. They would just kill if a horse got like broke his leg. They, they it was cheaper to shoot it mm. to just kill it. So like they were like horses being like killed left, right, and center, which you know, the horror man for me because oh. I love horses. A lot of happy dogs in the neighborhood, though. Right. <laughs> a lot of happy dogs. Ah. I wanted to ask because you you guys already covered pretty much what I was going to ask before. So I guess the obvious question is working with Morgan Freeman. Oh man, just. Nothing like that. I said the, the the coolest thing about Morgan is his voice precedes him. So you hear the voice first and you're sort of taken back to sort of like every great film you can yeah, possibly remember. Yeah, God. And then you think about your idols and like the people you sort of like, you, you know, the people you, you, you and people say don't meet your idols. Mm -hmm. That's an exception. You meet Morgan, it's, it's, it, he sort of exceeds that tenfold. He's like the coolest human being. The funniest motherfucker. Okay. Sorry to say, it's just funny? funny as hell. Like we were laughing so much, and brought sort of levity and made like a, what could be a really difficult, tough shoot uh -huh. much easier because it's so nice when you're working with an actor. Who not only sort of are you watching and realizing you're in the presence of greatness. Like mm -hmm. the guy is just phenomenal. Like there was a moment where I remember we were doing a scene and um and uh, they obviously forgot to give Morgan his last page of dialogue mm -hmm. the night before which was a monologue I'm not just like it was like a full page where he's just talking and you know you imagine someone be like what are you talking about I got to do this monologue now he was like give me 10 minutes oh. he goes to the car comes back 10 minutes later just first take nails it to the point where it's my line after it and I forget my line because oh, I'm like an amateur that is like, amateur that's it look at me he loved because I was like are you kidding me you're that good like I mean like and just smile throughout it you know what I mean one of those people is just as you million like a proper yeah man I couldn't say enough verbatim about this, like, like he got just every verb to the that's what I mean like a monologue where you know actors you know like I need days on this I need and you're like no he was just like give me 10 minutes and I'll nail it mm. and oh he's yeah, the coolest man you screw up a line the cool, no. you, and it was it was like I think I was just meant to answer yes at the end of it or something <laughs> I like it was like the simplest line and I just was like uh, yeah. <laughs> that's well that kind of leads to my curiosity like what's your method for memorization Mm. It's so weird. Um, I've d sort of done it for so long. Um, and, you know, like when you're doing Shakespeare and stuff like that, the funniest thing is I can memorize something pretty much. You could give me something. I probably have it memorized like it uh, like just from rehearsing it. But as soon as I'm done with a scene, I forget it instantly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the holding on to it. It's amazing that the memorizing something until it's done. It's because that you're putting so much in your head. Right. It's very hard. hard. Once you're done with it, you've almost got to rid yourself of it you completely. Let it go. So then, are you creepy? Like, are we? Well, after this film is since the <laughs> film is creepy? over. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm, like, I'm a freak. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. No, I mean like Jack. Yeah. So the film is over. I know they'll have like the big premiere, but then. Would you like sneak into a movie theater with like regular people, put a baseball cap on and go watch it and see how people react? Or once you're done, you're done. You don't never want to see this film again. Now, you know what? With this one, you know, I, I've, I've, I've seen it a few times. But you know what? I, uh, oh. This film, what they're doing is IMAX 3D for this. So the IMAX 3D, I haven't seen it yet. But I've heard they, they just played it for like 11 theaters in Brazil. I just came from Brazil uh -huh. where we were playing it. And people were, I'm not, this is actually like for falling off their seat, crying at the end of it. It was like wow. we got the most unbelievable reception for this movie. 
And it was such a beautiful thing to what like hear about because we're like, oh, all that work we put into it. Yeah. Right. And now you get to see an IMAX 3D where you see that chariot race or the oh. slave ship, this kind of stuff. The moments with the horses and stuff. Apparently, it's just unbelievable. unbelievable. So, you know, that's going to be pretty cool. Man. I can't wait to watch it. You got to yeah. watch it IMAX. Yeah. Hey, man, Jack Houston is here. Uh, Judah Ben-Hur. Hmm. Um, in theaters August 19th, man. Now that we got you, before you go, man, most of our first-time guests, uh, we have an initiation. All right. All right. And uh, there's something we need you to do. <laughs> and, and, and it's called, can you tell them what it's called, Heather? The Mystery Sack. It- go ahead and reach in. Dig deep, dig deep. <laughs> Put your hands into Sway's sack. That sounds gross. <laughs> it's Sway's mystery sack on Shade 45. Jack got real excited about putting his hand in my sack. Uh, but you said I meant it. <laughs> right. It's very shiny. Yeah, it's sack. a shiny little sack that Sway got. And, uh, it's Why you got to be simple. little? Uh, I, oh, okay. Well, it's a shiny <laughs> sack that Sway got. And uh, stick your hand in. Pull out three questions, one at a time. Read it out loud, Jack, and you have to answer honestly. Okay. Good luck. If Donald Trump offered to fund any movie idea of yours, would you take the deal? No way. I'm you, sorry. You wouldn't? No, I wouldn't do it. Money is money. It. Money I is can't money. support it, man. No. I can't support it. But that. it's just money. It has no political, you know. I know, but then I'm, I, I know, I know. I just wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't do it? Wouldn't do it. Well, if Hillary did it, would you do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mind admitting it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Question two. Is there a major role in a movie or TV series that you auditioned for but didn't get? <sighs> Is there what? There's many. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I'm trying to think. What? Well, like the most important one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One that you go. Damn it. Oh man. Oh god. Now I, this has been a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to it. think what. Um, not one that. Damn. I. I'm kind of a bit of a lover in that way. That I feel like if I don't get a part, I don't get the part. Okay. Like I feel like it's not meant to be mine. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people say that to themselves. So right say exactly. <laughs> you know. I know. I think it's my way of like you know preventing myself from crying myself to sleep every yeah. night. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, I fuck Robert that, Downey Jr. I'll just, think now. I'll think about it. I gotta <laughs> think about it. That Jason Bourne movie yeah. wasn't fuck meant for him. me anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a good. One. I think there's some parts coming up that I'll probably cry <laughs> myself to sleep if I don't get them. <laughs> Um, you've played a gangster, but you, have you ever had to get actually get gangster on someone? <sighs> yeah, you know what? When I was younger at school, man, there was mm-hmm. a there was a few times where uh, it was more for friends. Like uh-huh. if a friend of mine got in trouble or something like that, you'd, you'd always be there for a friend. So, so you beat up. I was as gang- I don't think I beat. I probably got beat up for a friend. <laughs> yeah, and there's a better way of saying it. I got hit for a friend a few times. Yeah, he got hit for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jack Houston, man. Thank you for your honesty, man. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. I know you gotta go. Don't leave me hanging, Jack. Yo, oh, right, 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 dude. I apologize, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thank you for coming through. No Good doubt. luck with the movie. Uh, oh. and, and then please come back. Yeah. Oh, All man, right. cool. thank you so much for having me. That was so much fun. Thanks, All right. guys. Ab- awesome. Absolutely. Uh, we got our next guest coming up, the one and only Lil Rel Howry. Uh, Jack Houston, man. Sway in the morning, Shade 4 or 5. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shade 45.